I've never tried this clipped in. I've never tried it by myself. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today is a super exciting day because not only is it new bike day, but it's also new kit day. Before I talk about my bike, let's talk about my new kit really quick. As some of you may have noticed, I started working with Pearl Izumi at the beginning of the season, and one of the collaborations we were gonna do was a fully custom jersey. So here it is, I got it last night. I'm super excited about it. Let's talk about my bike. So I dreamt up this bike, and the guys at Reeb made it specifically for me. And if you guys like it, we might even bring this to production. So comment below and let me know what you think. Here's a couple details on this bike. This is a full chromoly frame. The reach numbers for an extra large is 19.5. The reach on this bike is a little bit longer than an XL Diculus 2. The Diculus 2 has a 67 degree head tube angle. This bike has a 65 degree head angle and we also lowered the stack height, so I get my bars a little bit lower. The rear end on this bike is 407 millimeters. That's ridiculously short. You can see the back end tucks in super, super close. So that makes this bike really nimble, but it also gives you a long, low slack front end. The bottom bracket drop is 50 millimeters. Getting into suspension, there's only front suspension. So this is a DVO diamond. This was valve specifically for a hardtail, which sounds pretty fancy, but all they really did was decrease the air chamber so it ramps up a little bit more. I like to have my bike a little bit more progressive and I run it pretty stiff. The components are really awesome. It's a full XTR build kit. So that's the XTR trail brakes, which have incredible strength. I'm running 180 rotors front and back. It has an XTR shifter, 175 millimeter XTR crank with a 34 tooth chain ring. And then in the back, I have a 1051. Normally I would trail ride on a 32, but since I have the 51 in the back now, I figured a 34 would give me tall enough gearing, um, but I could still climb just about anything with the 51 in the back. Rounding out that XTR Grupo are the XTR trail pedals onto the grips and saddle. I'm using Ergon GE1 grips and the new SM Pro saddle. My cockpit is a Tharsis Pro Carbon handlebar. It's 20 millimeter rise. And then I'm running a 45 millimeter Tharsis stem on the front. And on top of that is a Wahoo Element Bolt computer. Rounding out the cockpit is the Shimano dropper post lever. It integrates into the XTR shifters and it makes a really clean cockpit area. There's only two clamps for the two brakes and then the shifter and the dropper post lever is all integrated. Something super exciting about this bike is a PNW 200 millimeter dropper post. As far as I know from what the guys told me, this is the first one out in the field. I figured it would be perfect for this bike so that if I do go dirt jumping or trial trying, I can get the seat ridiculously low. So I went with a 200 millimeter dropper. Tires are one of the most important components on the bike. These are Vittoria Martello Enduro casing with the graphene 2.0 tire compound. One really important part on this bike that you can't see is the orange seal sealant inside my tires. So I went with the slightly heavier casing so that I just avoid any kind of flats. For wheels, I'm running Industry 9 wheels. These are the Enduro 305. And in the back, I have the Hydra Hub this is the most amazing hub I've ever ridden. Super, super tight engagement. Last but not least, my longest sponsor is Cliff Bar. So I had to go with the Cliff Bar water bottle inside a pro carbon water bottle cage. There you have it. That's a quick overview of this brand new bike. So this road behind me leads to my favorite trail, Tiger's Blood. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that's one of my go-to trails. It's some place I go to take all my new equipment for comparative purposes. Let's go ride. Here we go, maiden voyage. Once we get into this trail, you should recognize bits and pieces of it. It's a fun technical loop, it takes about 20 minutes. I take all my new stuff on there. It'll give me a good indication of how this bike feels. I haven't ridden this trail in a little bit, so I'm not sure what the condition's gonna be like, but come up here around here now the extra tricky line is right up that spine Ooh, these tires are so grippy up the bank back up here everything's so green 
can tell it's been raining a lot. Brakes aren't totally bedded in yet. That might take a second. A lot of mud on my new bike. No. This is a fun obstacle coming up. I take a nice wide line and then right up. With that 200 millimeter dropper, you definitely got a ton of room to move. You go straight up that thing. You don't even have to worry about your seat. Here's an obstacle I haven't even touched since last year. I made this for a video with my good friend Lance Trappy and we did it in flats and it's pretty intimidating and there's kind of a reason I haven't come back to it. I've never tried this clipped in. I've never tried it by myself. Oh, and I never POV'd it. Sweet. First try. All right. I'm not gonna lie, that was a little nerve nerve wracking. Next little tech section. It's usually the dumb little stuff that screws you up. Let's go out here. And down there. On a lot of these tight turns, 65 degree head angle feels pretty good. Now I'm kind of getting warmed up. This is a cool little rock section. I'll try to do this alternate line though. So down here and up there. First try. My brake levers are a little loose though. <laughs> oh. New bike day. Might need to check the torque on those brake levers. As you can see, I torqued them both down. Oh, might want to go a little bit tighter with those. So the reason that happened, a lot of times you don't want to put your brake levers too tight because you don't want them to be too stiff if you get in a crash or something. But when you do those moves, it's all in your wrist and you could really roll those levers. And on something like that, I'm totally depending on that lever to be like an actual lever, not a brake lever, but a lever to push down on and get downward force so I can lift up my back end. All right, let's see how this feels on a hardtail. This kind of ripply through here. Keeping it rolling out here. That's just a lot of consecutive small stair steps on the suspension bike, it sucks it right up. But the hardtail felt really good. I've thrown in two made for video option lines so far, and I made them. But when I screw up this trail, this is it right here. This is honestly, oh, I almost screwed it up again. That is where I screw up this trail if I screw it up. Right there, it's just an awkward rock garden. No real rhythm through there. And it just seems like, I don't know if it's the spacing on my extra large frame or what, but it's just always super, super awkward. But still clean, pretty awesome. Once you get through there, you're pretty much home free. When you look at the elevation profile of this trail, it's not super steep, but it does tax you for sure because you're using your whole entire body. There we go out here. Here. Oh, disgusting mud pit on my new bike again. Gross. This is the fastest section on this trail down there. And you'll see it's not very fast. 
come high on here, bump jump that log into that lander. And then there's a tree down here. You gotta hop that and then gross. And then when I screw up, this is usually my second most common place. I'm gonna take that nice and wide. Up there, sweet. It's just all line choice. There's a couple baby head rocks and a little tree stump that'll snag your back tire. Time for another option line, but this one's fairly basic down here. And just a little wheelie drop in, carry some speed into here. Take it kind of high, it decreases radius. And right through. I don't want to jinx myself between now and the end, but I think those were the hardest parts. The climb out is tough, but until then, should be fairly smooth sailing. All right, up and over this rock. Oh, they took away the landing. Luckily, the 65 degree head angle, you didn't need it. And then up here, straight up, find that crack down here, down here. And he's home free. Sweet. Oh my God. This bike is amazing. Definitely awesome for technical riding. Cleaning Tiger's blood uh, is hard. Cleaning it without touching it in months is super hard. And throwing in those option lines, I didn't think I'd be able to get those. So super, 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 super stoked on this bike. You will absolutely be seeing a lot more of this thing. I plan to take it all over the place. And until next time, I'll see you on the trail.